All right, everybody, we're taking a look at Ryan Harvey's swing here. We're going to talk about why we start and teach differently than traditional baseball coaching um, in baseball and in softball and slow pitch and every, everywhere, girls, fast pitch, everything around. Now, Ryan Harvey is a very highly ta talented individual. He can probably start like this and repeat the same swing over and over every single time. Um, but he has to reroute the bat a lot. And let me tell you what I mean by that. So he's starting with the bat straight up in the air, back elbow up, front shoulder, kind of down. A lot of baseball um, mechanics that were traditional baseball mechanics that we're looking here that we're not real wild about in the softball world. Um, but he's talented enough to, to, to pull it off. Um, what I really love is his stride. It's just like a glide step as he pulls the hands back. Um, I just love this here. Now, this position here, I would call this his connected position. Man, I would never teach this to a rec guy it, or a lesson guy. This is going to be so hard. Um, he's in this position here. If he starts to snap his wrists, I mean, he'd either swing the bat straight down into the ground or he'd have to drop his hands and then loop back up through, which is what a lot of uh, amateur guys do. He has to, before he can snap his wrists within the rotation he has to get the knob of the bat pointed out towards us and this and the bat has to be rerouted all the way uh, from this connected position watch how he does it beautifully though i mean he comes through he starts his rotation right now out of the connected position and as he starts to rotate he actually positions his wrists and turns it so it's in a great position here i mean this is basically how i start in my stance and how we teach everyone um, look, he's got the knob pointed out at us. The bat is, you know, visible but barely visible. This is a better shot here. He gets it into a better position here. Now he's in a position where he can start to snap his wrist, but he actually did lose um, some room there where his hands could have been snapping earlier in the swing where, you know, believe it or not, he could pick up some more speed um, and power that way. Um, he doesn't really need it. But uh, just showing you, uh, you know, a tiny little nuance in the swing there. He has to reroute that bat all the way to here. Now he can; those wrists are in a position where he can actually snap and take the hands. You know, he's not taking the hands towards the ball. If he took his hands towards the ball, he'd be taking them up here and he'd be golfing up through. He's taking his hands towards where he's anticipating the ball to be, give or take human error. You know, let's say he thinks the ball is going to be somewhere in this area. He's going to take his hands, his hand path. Just like the video, the great video that we just posted uh, recently, the hand path usually goes on a slightly down angle uh, depending on where you start with your hands, but he's going to take his hands on a straight line to where he thinks the ball is going to be and be snapping through that. Here we go, snap and snap and snap and snap and snap, and those wrists are going on a, you know, an angle down to where the ball is, not dropping the hands and lifting up through. Now, uh, the bat head is a different story. The bat head is never going to travel down. I mean, we don't want it to travel down. With uh, gravity and torque and rotation and everything else, the hand path is going to be like this, and we're snapping our wrist sideways. The bat head is always going to come around here and going to be, you know, below the ball, and then it's going to be slightly up. You know, this if you just watch this, with a naked eye and don't watch a lot of film, it looks like he's swinging down on the ball. But look at here, the bat head is up. You know, the bat head is gonna travel up to the ball, boom. You know, and then he finishes down through, you know, this is, if you just took this one frame, um, he's getting out to full extension, which is phenomenal. It's a little bit shorter pitch too. You know, I like to swing at stuff that's, or teach guys to swing things that are belly button to chest high, just cause it makes it easier. Um, but you know, he's just, he's just got a phenomenal way of repeating that swing over and over. Now let's compare it to, uh, my mechanics here. This, this is just so much easier for me to get into a position and this is what we teach and this is what we've had success with. And this is what I've been doing since, uh, you know, fourth grade baseball. I've been having an overlap grip and standing like this. I have the knob pointed out at the camera. You can't even see my bat. So I'm already in that position that Ryan Harvey and every single other great hitter gets into, as we'll see. Um, once you start watching film, you'll see that every hitter gets into this position. So I just said very early on, why not just start here? And then all I have to do is just like Harvey does ha have a glide step. I don't like to have a huge leg kick or anything. Just have a glide step, pull my hands back as my front foot's landing and then the second part of the swing is going to kick in. Look at this. Same position he is in, except I can actually start my snap a little bit sooner. Um, you know, I need the little bit of extra uh, power over what he has physically. 
And uh, this is just an excellent position here. And remember this position when we're going to go look at Frank Henry next. Uh, and then now all I got to do is rotate and snap. This is a little bit higher pitch. So I'm going to anticipate the ball being, you know, somewhere in this area, chest high to, to even higher. So my hands are actually going to go level to slightly up. My hands are actually going to move slightly up because the pitch is higher. If the pitch was down here, like, like Harvey swung at, my hands would go on a path like this. But since this way, this is so much easier too. It's easier to take your hands and your bat on the same path and drive the ball up in the air on a, on a chest high ball. That's why I always look for a, a chest high pitch. Um, I'm already snapping, snapping the wrist, snapping the wrist, snap, 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 boom. And then I'm out to full extension, um, just a higher pitch, but this is the same position that Harvey was in. And then finishing around, uh, on a, swinging on a straight line. Let's take a look at Frank Henry, who has some of the best mechanics. I just think they're aesthetically pleasing. Now he starts in a position here where, where his uh, hands and his bat are just kind of you know relaxed right there. But watch as he starts to come forward. First movement is always forward, the head. The body, the chest, everything is coming forward, 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 just like a pitcher in the stretch off the mound, pushing off the inside of the back foot. He's pulling the hands back as the front foot is moving forward. That's just so beautiful to watch that, how they're, they're moving in unison but in opposite directions. Now here we go there. This is the connected position for Frank. Look at this. I mean, this is just absolutely perfect if I could teach this to, um, you know, everyone to start in this position. And then now all you got to do is rotate and snap, rotate and snap. I mean, his wrists are in a position here, just like mine were, where he can start to rotate and snap right away. There's no rerouting of the bat or any other nonsense to have to do um, before starting the swing. Um, and I would advocate for this in baseball and everything else. But watch how now all he has to do is just start to roll. Look at he can already start snapping these wrists right here. You know, if there's a secret to the pro swing, there's a few of them. But if there's one huge secret, they are not waiting until you get all the way to here and then all of a sudden flicking their wrists into the contact right there, even though that's what it looks like on film. They're not just pulling the bat head around lazily and then flicking the wrist at the end. Especially if, you know, imagine if he was going backside, you know, he'd be hitting the ball. If he was going down the right field line, he'd be hitting the ball about right here. You know, th there would be no snap at all. And you're telling me that he's hitting that with no snap? No, he's snapping, and this is what we teach, he's snapping all the way from here. You know, right when the rotation starts, boom, he's already starting to torque his wrist. Now he's not going to be able to, to you know, what, what baseball guys will call cast casting. I mean, it doesn't matter how much you torque your wrist here, uh, unless you're not rotating at all and you're just standing there like a statue and throw your arms out and just swing with your arms, um, there's going to be no casting to be had. It's snapping within the rotation. His lead shoulder and his upper body and his hips and his lower body, just like the rotational trainer drill, the, the, he's connected here. You know, the upper body and lower body and the snap of the wrist are all connected. That's why it's the connected position. He starts to rotate and snap, rotate and snap, rotate and snap. His rotation is pulling the snap around and then boom, out to the to point of contact. The wrists are not rolled over here. They're still sideways. Um, and then they're going to roll over right after contact because he's snapping just like he's burying an axe into a tree. But you do not want to continue on this path or it's just going to be a lazy drag around. No, he's been snapping from the beginning. So right after contact, boom, then they, they roll over on their own. You don't have to try and flip the wrists into the ball. Um, and then once again, he's out to full extension and, and, and uh, you know, after contact, full extension on a straight line, just like he's swinging along the top of a rope. Uh, so there's just a little bit of... Um, of looking at a, a couple swings there of these guys. Let's take a look at Canel, one more of, of the top pros here um, that I use in my swings and my online swing analysis. Um, send us an email, swingmakeover at gmail.com. I will always look at your swings for free. Um, we also have a paid option to give you a, a customized video, but that's, uh, there's no obligation to do that. Um, swingmakeover at gmail.com. Just contact me and I'll be glad to look at your swings. That's the number one thing I can advocate to you guys is uh, videotaping yourself. Nobody videotapes themselves. You don't know what you're doing wrong unless you see it on tape. Um, and then what you think you're fixing, you don't know what it is unless you're watching it on tape or video, I'm saying tape, uh, just used to saying that. Here's Canel. great, once again, coming forward, coming forward, coming forward. Man, look at this bat position. I mean, he really has to, 
do some major rerouting compared to you know Frank Henry's swing or my swing. Let's just call this his connected position. I mean, look at that. I mean, that's even, you know, it's wrapped around his head almost. I mean, there's no way he can start to snap his wrist or even start the swing at all from this position. Um, he really has to reroute it and then uh, get it into a proper swing plan. Um, but look what he does. Look at, he rotates, he rotates, he starts to swing. Look at, now he's in this position right here. Every hitter gets into this position right here, except for bad players. Um, bad players get into this position here. They start with their bat up in the air or they wave it around because they think it's uh, aesthetically pleasing or it's cool to do that or they were taught that or they, see, they, they perceive that other players are doing that. And then they, they get into this position here and I see it all the time. Their wrists will still be vertical and the bat will be standing up in the air because they think, and then, and then they try to rotate and they don't get to the point where their wrists are right here, like canals until about right here. And then they get no snap, no proper bat plane or anything. Um, just so you understand that every great hitter gets into this position right here. Um, and then watch, once again, it's just a repeat of the same you know, performance before. Rotate and snap, rotate and snap, snapping those wrists, snapping those wrists. Look how the hand path, he's anticipating where that ball is going to be. This ball is right in the zone. It's going to be right in this area here. He's not taking his hands to the ball up here. He's taking his hands to where he's anticipating the ball is going to be. Hand path, we snap sideways. Uh, on a straight line, but on a slightly down angle. But watch what the bat head does. The bat head actually drops down a little bit and then it's gonna come up through. Boom, and he's out to full extension. It's just uh, phenomenal there. One last thing to show you is uh, the training that we do to get our bat path there and to get our wrists in that proper position so there's no rerouting. Set up a rope. I mean, we have this slide, this uh, swing simulator. You can make one at home or, or buy one, but uh, it's just a straight line. This is training the hand path. So this is there. If the, if the pitch is out here somewhere, taking the hand path on a slightly down angle, but on a straight line. Hands back, body coming forward, and then rotation, rotation and snap. There's no rerouting at all here. Just rotation and snap all the way through on a straight line out to full extension. So you can see different swings, but there's always that one fundamental that is uh, equal throughout them. Get yourself into that position and you'll start getting improvements big time with your swings.